It's the Big East regular season opener for Rutgers and 10th ranked Syracuse. The Scarlet Knights at 9 and 3, Syracuse 11 and 2. Here is the West Division through the non-conference part of the schedule and the Pitt Panthers with a 12 and 1 mark out to the hottest start in the division, but a whole new ball game now as we jump in to the Big East regular season. Beth Mowens along with Bob Valvano and Bob, of course, a lot of people up here in Syracuse. Very excited to have Jim Beheim back on the bench 2 and 0 since his return and the Orange have really been stressing the defensive end of the floor. I was going to say, if you like your teams to guard people, you got to be happy the head coach is back because look at the difference it's made. 11% difference in the defensive field goal percentage translates to more than 20 points a game. And then the other side of it as well is offensively a lot less turnovers, which is, I guess, probably human nature. The bosses around you tend to be a little bit more careful with the basketball. On the other sideline for Rutgers, it's a new boss, Gary Waters, in his first season with the Scarlet Knights. He stresses defense too, but he's also going to need some guys to put the ball in the basket. Well, he does stress defense. He built a terrific program at Kent State stressing defense and rebounding, but that can only carry you so far. You've still got to shoot the basketball, and this is the guy who does it for Rutgers. Jerome Coleman averaging almost 16 points a game, and Beth, they're not blessed with an abundance of great shooters. This young man's going to have to shoot the ball well tonight and all season long for the Scarlet Knights. And they've already seen a marked improvement in scoring from last season to this season. They'll try and figure out a way to slow down Preston Schumper, Syracuse's new all-time leading three-point shooter. The Cuse and Rutgers coming up next. And 10th ranked Syracuse. The Big East regular season opener for both these clubs. And Jim Beheim soon to be playing on Jim Beheim Court here at the Carrier Dome. It will be named as such later this season. A honor, uh, certainly well deserved. I mean, we'll, we could spend most of the evening, Beth, just reading the accolades for this guy. <laughs> Over 600 career wins. He's the eighth fastest to do it. And was voted the. Uh, USA Basketball Coach of the Year, by the way, for leading the young men's team to the championship gold in 2001. So very impressive and uh, still going strong. Over three decades of service to Syracuse University basketball, the starting lineups, Rutgers. Well, you look at this uh, Rutgers team, as we talked about at the top, Beth, not a team that's blessed with great shooting, but inside they do have some guys who will hammer you and punish you on the glass. Led by Mr. Kent, who uh, Rashad Kent, of course, is a one of the nation's best rebounders. 275 pounds of him, very, very strong, and that's what Coach Waters is going to build on defense and rebounding. Certainly, this first year. A lot of youth on both sides. Gary Walters, his first season at Rutgers, started out 0-2, and, and the uh, the Scarlet Knights had an early season gut check, and they passed. Their first big test of the season, they ran off eight straight wins at one point before losing at Virginia, a game they really should have won. Yeah, yeah, that was a game I think it really got people's attention, even probably even more than the wins. But teams are kind of mirror images of each other a bit. They both believe different ways of going about it, but you got to get good ball pressure defensively, got to rebound. And I think they both would like to go up and down. Coach Waters would eventually. He may not this year, but he will eventually. And it's going to be an interesting test for his uh, Scarlet Knights. Against a Syracuse team that for the first time ever under Coach Beheim starts two freshmen. Craig Forth and Hakeem Warwick on the front line. About two-thirds of the scoring for Syracuse comes from the perimeter trio of Shumpert, Williams, and Dwayne. The double on Shumpert. Fade away. Doesn't get the kind roll. Well, Rutgers will have to do that. They'll have to control the defensive backboard. They kind of tip rebound it, but they got it. Well, Gary Waters has stressed that's probably job number one. Control the glass. Inside Kent goes to the left side of the hoop for his first basket. Well, that's impressive because, as we said, they are not blessed with great shooters. Syracuse, of course, in that terrific 2-3 zone. They played so well. You get a foul on the backboard here. Sherrod a little bit overly aggressive on the ball. But if you can establish an inside game, it'll give you some open looks in that mid-range, maybe some drive and kicks, and, and ultimately put the ball in the one shooter's hands, Jerome Coleman, which they're going to need. Quick talk already at the top here by John Cahill. And as we said, there's no team that plays good defense, Beth, without, as you know, without great ball pressure. So mm -hmm. Two different ways of doing it, but Rutgers will try and get up in your face. You, know, you saw it earlier. Are well, those two guys familiar with one another as well? Uh, Sherrod and Williams, both from the New York City area. Pass deflected. First takeaway for Rutgers. It's a crossover. Coleman off the mark. And there's Warwick with the weak side board. 
this is what makes Shumpert so hard to guard is Williams because he's such a good scorer as well. And we'll see which of them gets on track first. Williams with a nice crossover move. Shot blocked by Dabney. Easy lay-in missed by Shumpert. Both these teams very good shot blockers. Runner is good from Mike Sherrod. Good elevation from the sophomore from Brooklyn. Well, they're getting inside too easily. They post it up easily, and that's two drives in the lane. Jim Beheim's going to certainly want more defensive effort than that. Nobody can allow the ball in the lane that easily and expect to succeed. Rutgers playing the man. Gary Water says, I like to take the heart out of a team with the pressure D. Warwick with the miss. Syracuse getting some second opportunities. Let's see if they take advantage. Williams misses on the three ball. Long rebound to Sherrod. Shields will take the jumper. Preston has the board. Syracuse dodging some bullets here early. It could be an eight or nine nothing lead, frankly. Quest Dwayne in traffic. Good hustle by Akeem Warwick. Offensive putback. Well, I'll tell you, if you're, there's two ways to look at this. If you're a Syracuse fan, you could easily be down nine zip right now. If you're a Rutgers fan, you don't go on the road and win and allow the other guy to play this poorly at the start and not take advantage of it. Four-point lead is not enough to come out of this bad start by uh, the Cuse who missed a couple of bunnies inside. Haven't played the great defense. This crowd won't sit until they score. They're getting a little light weary. Syracuse is 0 for 8. Half of those at least within two feet from the bucket. The three is good from Jerome Coleman showing fantastic range. Uh, Rutgers now has scored on a drive, on a post up, and on a three. Good versatility. Deshaun Williams with the first basket breaks the ice for Syracuse. Well, that's something you got to be disappointed in. The coach, nothing you like less than make a three, give up a three, gain nothing on that possession. Even a layup, you make a point up on that exchange. One thing, when Syracuse plays well, they are very good pressuring the ball, even in that zone. Kent, good position on the freshman, and Warwick fouls Rashad. Okay, the games I did last year, I noticed that and Syracuse is in a nice groove, and you saw those stats at the top, that they do a good job defensively. Shooting percentage is 36%. That starts with pressure on the ball. Look at this. No pressure on the ball here at all. No pressure on the receiver. Wide open pass, slow rotation. They really, that is not the kind of defense that we came to see in the preseason NIT even yeah. from this uh, Syracuse team. They're going to have to take it up and notch. This Rutgers team is too good for that now. I don't know if you were ever, could ever play them that way, but you certainly can't anymore. Rashad Kent. This has become a Six Flags adventure every time he steps to the foul line. Just 39%, the one glaring weakness in his game right now. This is both. He missed one left and one right. That's not a good sign. That means he's really got no clue where it's going. That has been an area where they have put in a lot of time working with him, trying to develop that, and it hasn't come around yet. Shumpert, nice head fake. In the Kent, contact, no whistle. Syracuse will keep it. Now you like the fact Rutgers in there trying to draw the charge, not allowing the unimpeded move to the basket. When Shepard started the drive, he'd like to see some of his teammates move, give him an out, give him an option as a dish, a kick out. Shepard coming off the screen again. The Rutgers defense is there. Coleman inside. Easy look. Rutgers can't knock it down. Here comes Syracuse. Williams, a little shake and bake. To tip it back up and in. This is a hangover offense from the New Year's holiday. <laughs> One for 11 now for Syracuse from the floor. Coleman pass picked off. James Theus, who has come on for Syracuse. Wow. Jumper unattended. Count the basket. It has been more a matter of defensive mistakes for baskets than really anything spectacular offensively. Watch where this pass goes here now. This is a pass from outside the three-point line on the right sideline to the left block. That pass shouldn't get there in a season. 
That's uh, disappointing to Coach Waters, needless to say. And it's kind of been a defensive ineptitude more than anything anybody's done offensively, with the exception of the Jerome Coleman three, which was from Binghamton. That was deep. But uh, <laughs> the rest of the stuff has been kind of a mishmash of errors. Shumpert's numbers offensively, second best in the conference behind Troy Bell. 7-6 Rutgers early on. Carrier Dome, 7-6 Rutgers with the lead. Well, Jim Beheim, after his first game back, the South Florida game, at his post-game press conference, Coach Beheim had this to say to the Syracuse fans. We'll get ready to play. It's my job to get us ready to play, and I hope some fans decide to come here and have fun. <laughs> Why they want to come here and sit over there and not do anything? And then somebody gets up and cheers, and the guy next to him tells him to sit down. And if we fostered that, then that's our fault and shame on us. But we need to get some enthusiasm in this building if we're going to be successful. Hard to debate that. If you got one fan telling another one to stop cheering, that's not a good environment. No. Uh, you can't argue with the coach on that one. I'm not sure I've uh, seen that today, but uh, hasn't been particularly inspiring offensive performance by the Cues. Two of 12 shooting. Yeah. Perhaps if they pick it up a bit, we'll have everyone standing and yelling. But Rutgers, uh, fortunate, I guess, to have a 7 6 lead. They haven't exactly lit it up either. Shot off the mark from Eugene Dabney. Kent is there with the rebound. About three offensive boards a game, third best in the conference for Kent. Now, on the one hand, I said there's not much ball pressure, but Syracuse understands this is not a great shooting Rutgers team, so they do want to pack it in a bit, so I don't want to over-exaggerate that, but you can't just let people take the ball wherever they want. you got to get in the lane. you got to get them off balance. Again. The kick out to Hervé Lamazana in for the first time off the mark. And he can't shoot it, by the way. Wouldn't know by that, but he can. <laughs> the sophomore from the Ivory Coast, Shumper with the miss. McNeil is there. Terrific move by Williams to draw the foul. will go to the line. Take a, another look. Again, offensive uh, glass and a in the lane. Gets the bump, tries to get it around the other side. But the bump actually is what keeps him from having enough leverage, enough angle to get it up on the glass and spin it back in. Beth makes his team tough to guard. You got three proven scorers. We talked about it. Shepard averages 22.4. Williams averages 20.4. And Quest Wayne, 14.6. This guy goes for almost five assists a game as well. That's a pretty good trio. Two players scoring at a 20 point clip or better this season for Syracuse, Williams, and Shumpert. Beheim has never finished up a season with two 20 point scorers. That's what you want to see. Syracuse getting a hand in the passing lane now, getting a deflection, turning it into a turnover. That time they, they didn't allow Rutgers to just throw it into the post. Getting a little bit more active, still not extending because there aren't many shooters there. Those are the numbers in Beheim's 25 years. Billy Owens, Lawrence Moten, and John Wallace, the only three guys to have a 20-point season. And right now they've got two on one team. Inside McNeil rejected. This team will block shots right here. They both will, as you pointed out. Sherrod pulls up from the elbow. Dwayne clears it out. Syracuse with the quick counter. Williams waits for Shumpert. He's front rimmed a couple from deep. Rutgers is dodging bullets there as we get a foul on the crowd. Not appreciative of that. Mr. McNeil making an effort back there. Jeremy McNeil, the 6'8 sophomore, big fella, almost 260, and hard for him to hide out there in the backcourt. He makes contact. Somebody's going to see it. Give you an idea, though, how well uh, Preston Shepard shoots the ball. It took him 111 less attempts than Lawrence Moten to become that all-time three-point shooting leader. That's, that's a significant difference in the number of attempts. But he's not shooting well so far today. Well, 200 threes in his career. Just breaking Moten's record. Syracuse warming the test defensively here a bit. Not letting Rutgers get inside, blocking the perimeter shot. Coleman shot blocked by Williams. This, Deshaun, deep three. Syracuse, one for five now from deep. Coleman, right back to put it up again, and he hits. Well, that you can't like. I mean, that's the danger. 
when you think the team is not a good shooting team, you sag so far, you've got to find the shooter. You can't let him get a rhythm jump or a one pass. That's six of their ten points off threes from that guy. Jim Mayheim will have to make an adjustment there, obviously. Guy who says it's an honor to be Coach Waters' first recruit. The first guy he brought in is Dwayne responds with a three. That's Shooting it tremendously better this year, Bob. Well, I was gonna say that's gonna be killing Gary Waters, though. You give up make a three, give up a three. It's twice he's done that. Can't put any runs together doing that. Last year he was 12 for 45. This year he's already hit 17 threes as Quet Dwayne. His percentage has doubled from downtown. La Mazana. Trap in the corner That's for Syracuse. A That's a good job. That's what Syracuse will do. It's a little soft on the perimeter. They'll throw it to the boat baseline, though, and they will put the clamps down. They did a terrific job of it there. We'll take a look at how much room they get out there. But once it goes to the baseline, here comes Dwayne McNeil. Good job. No foul. You don't want to bail a guy out with a, with a bailout foul. And when uh, Dabby brings it down low enough, Dwayne ties him up. Almost like a clean steal. Another takeaway for Syracuse. Theus looking inside the war. Watch with it be. Oh, oh push push the push foul. Oh. Yeah, push led to the wall. That's a good call. John Cannon, it was definitely done. It's going to go against Kareem Wright, the junior from Lansdowne, Pennsylvania, who has had phenomenal success. His best games have come against Syracuse. The terrific outing last year that the Orange pulled out by a point. Wright played a big role in that one. And stepping on the end line was Warwick. And Rutgers now has got to find a balance where, uh, as we talked about, Coleman's been their outside threat, and he will be. That, there's no secret there. But when they haven't been able to throw it inside, and Coleman's been silent, there's been a lot of standing around. They throw it to the baseline, they're afraid they're going to get trapped. They've got to get some seams, create some other offense. There's a seam. Shields finds that seam you were talking about, fights for the rebound, gets it back out to Lamazano. There you go. The kick back out. Ricky Shields hits another three. Oh, that's what the, the, getting to the seam in the zone does two things. It opens up rebounding lanes, and then, of course, it gives what George Carl calls the best attack in basketball, that drive and kick. Lamazano finds the shooter for three. Rutgers three of five from deep. Shumpert responds with two. Syracuse done a good job of responding every time Syracuse gets a little whiff of taking some momentum here. Tied at 13, 11 and a half to go in the first half. Lamazana, he's missed badly on two shots from beyond the arc. Dwayne leaking out, can't hang on to the long ball. Probably not a lot of domes in the Ivory Coast. <laughs> to play. Here's what Quet Dwayne was looking at. Just couldn't hang on. Coming right at you. At Syracuse, 11-22 to go in the first half. Elsewhere tonight, Miami looking to go to 14-0. They've got the lead over Georgetown in the second half on the road. We'll tie the all-time record for longest win streak as we uh, take a look at uh, very early, obviously, Villanova and Providence. This is not technically opening night here in the Big East because it was one game New Year's Eve. Boston College beat Seton yep. Hall, but this really is the uh, getting into full swing here. UConn tries to rebound from tough loss for them against the Bonnies. Taking on Virginia Tech. Syracuse staying in the 2-3. Sherrod, the runner, hits it. Well, they're getting into seams, as we talked about. Uh, that's been key. They got took down the baseline, made a good diagonal pass out of that trap, and that's what opens up the driving line. Let's see when they're shooting 50% from outside the arc. Shumpert tries the baseline drive, and that's going to be the second personal on Kareem Wright. Shepard is a guy who is difficult. I mean, here we got to state the obvious. You don't average 22.4 points a game with one move. But what makes him so difficult is he's got the great range. Uh, he's got the good size. He's 6'6", long arms. He can make that mid-range shot. He can create a shot for himself. And he really reads the game well. You take a look at his eyes as he's putting the ball on the floor. He sees what's there. Jim Bayheim, the 
this year has started to call him the best shooter he has ever had. High praise indeed. Wow. Block from Axani. That triggers the break. Theus, quick hands to take it away. Dwayne out in front. And the clutch. Well, that's why he's so valuable. He knows his place. He's really the third option behind Shumpert and Williams, but he gets his buckets, gets runouts, hits the three with a good percentage this year, as you talked about. That's a very valuable weapon. Doubled his rebounding. His point production has gone from 5 to 14 points this year, and the turnover gives it back to Syracuse. That was a crazy pass as we watch the, the tip. Theus knocks it away, stays after it, gets it. That's not a good play by Kent. You're the last man back. You can't run at the ball, and it leads to that. Laney with the unobstructed two-hand flush. Theus getting plenty of playing time off the bench, 29 minutes per game. He's second in the Big East in assist to turnover ratio, handling the point very well. He still hasn't really taken on a personality yet. It's tied as well it should be. It's kind of floated a bit. We'll see if somebody can seize this thing before after. Rutgers with the takeaway. Setting up is Jason McCoy off the window. Bank is open. The holiday's over. Doesn't matter. No pictures on the scoreboard. Jason said, I'm going to make sure it gets there. It didn't hit any rim, but hit a lot of backboard. <laughs> Got his money's worth on that one. Williams tries to counter. And the foul will be called on McNeil. And Bob, I think that's the first time that Rutgers has gone down and scored a three and not given up a three at the other end defensively. And when it was rattling around the rim, that thought went through my mind. They're going to do this again. I'm going to say the same thing for the third time. But, you know, you can't put runs together that way. Now they've got a chance. It's as I said, it's not a Nobody's going to win the game here with 9.21 to go in the first half. But you're trying to get a little bit of momentum, trying to give yourself a position to have a lead at halftime. And that's not going to do it there. Just the kinds of things over anxiousness. Of Jason McCoy, the freshman, takes it and dunned it to the cheerleaders down there on the baseline. Uncharacteristic, too, for McCoy, although he's a freshman, didn't have any turnovers in seven games, and he, that's his first one in the last five. Trying to isolate Chumper inside there, let him set a ball screen and then dive uh, Joel Wigan down for the block. Again, there's a difference. Wiggins 6'3", freshman. Shepard is 6'6", senior, knows all the tricks. That's just what you think you do there, draws the foul. Craig Forth, the freshman from East Greenbush, New York, back on for Syracuse. With a fresh 35. Good help that time by Kent. Recovers to get back on fourth, taken away. Tough pass, even if he catches, he's got nowhere to go. Wigan momentarily loses the handle. And fourth down on the hardwood to tie him up. And 8.46 to play here in the first half. Rutgers with the three-point lead, 18 to 15. Four of seven three-pointers for Rutgers. And they have been able to Turn it over from Syracuse six times here in the first half and on the drive from Shumpert, the foul. I think it's obvious what we've seen the last three possessions from Jim Beheim. He wants to get Preston Shumpert untracked. He's only two of seven with five points. He ran the play for him on the block. He ran the out-of-bounds play for him, and that time was a set play to get Shumpert coming around a staggered set of screens, and it works as he gets to the free throw line. Preston, 86%, best on the team, eighth best in the league. That's an area where clearly Syracuse has a decided advantage. Almost 70% from the line for Syracuse, not even 60 for Rutgers. That may be an issue in a close game like this one is shaping up to be. Well, especially if they want to reverse the trend. Last year they had six games in the conference that they lost by four points or fewer, including one to Syracuse by a point. connections here in the first half. Well, that's why neither team's been able to take control, Beth. Every time you put one play together, you follow it up with another, that gives you a chance to put something, a little momentum in your, on your side, and then an unforced error, which is really what that was. It was Syracuse hit the two free throws, got a good hand in the passing lane, got a steal, and then gives it away. Rutgers has done kind of the same thing at their end when they've had the chance. 15 turnovers the two teams combined here in the first half. 
The floater won't drop. Rebounded by Force. Theus, and he's fouled by Jerome Coleman. Perhaps a little frustrated after the miss at the other end. He certainly is not a guy they can afford to get in foul trouble. Not that he's there at this point. It's only his first foul, but still, not only uh, is that an unnecessary foul, I'll just say maybe an emotional one, but this team in the bonus now gives Syracuse a chance to take the lead at the line. Theus, the sophomore from Detroit, who had an interesting conversation, spent some time over the summer with Lazara Sims, the point guard that took Syracuse to the Final Four in 96. Struggled last year not getting a lot of minutes, and Z really worked on him in terms of helping him accept what his role is for this Syracuse team, especially with the other scorers that they have. There's no question, any sport, I don't care what it is, you're gonna have guys who understand their role and thrive in it, and you're not gonna get very far. Turkis has done a good job of getting him in the passing lane when they tried to. That's a charge. Nice job defensively there. That's what we talked about. No defense works well unless you play good on ball defense. And that's what Syracuse did there. Drawing the charge. He gets foul number two. That is the second on Sherrod. Tied at 18. 7.39 to go in the half. And now let's take a moment to thank our corporate partner, Cooper Tire. Proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. I'll tell you, Syracuse uh, not, is, I guess, fortunate that they are tied shooting five for 22. Rutgers fortunate that they're tied, not doing the two things they need to. They've made more turnovers than they've created, and they're getting out rebounded. So somebody's got to get straightened out because not doing what need, uh, either of them, or both of them need to do as we almost wind up probably a little bit more intimate than Mr. Williams than we would like. <laughs> but they are uh, having trouble getting on track, these two teams. Clearly, but neither team has gotten in any kind of a rhythm. As you see there, that turnover was absolutely unforced. Unless they want to be to shut up, they threw the ball at me. <laughs> After the two losses, Jim Beheim made him go back into the locker room and watch tape from the NIT, where they played so well. And they may have to watch some tape here at halftime, not liking the intensity so far. Neither is Gary Waters. Well, they just made the exact turnover the other way. Basically, as unforced as you can get. It's difficult to get in a rhythm once it's, it's like hitting. It feeds on itself, good and bad, in baseball. So it does in basketball as well. And now Rutgers shows some zone. Some 3-2 with Sherrod out on top. Deshaun Williams, air ball. Last touched by Coleman, Syracuse will keep it. Did not hit the rim, so just 13 on the shot clock. Let's see what they do on the out of bounds. They stay in the zone or they'll rematch up. Looks like they're gonna stay in their zone. We'll go back to Williams. And the foul will be called on Deshaun as Kent beat him to the spot. Well, as I say, you know, one thing coaches preach all the time, no matter how much your offense struggles, your defense should be consistent, and that means moving your feet, trying to take the charge, and we're seeing both teams at least trying to do that. Coaches kind of slim picking stuff, something to hang your hat on, but that's one thing they can right now. See Rutgers going high-low against that zone, and they got it in there that time. Olamazana draws the foul. Syracuse fans wanted to walk, but instead it's going to be on Preston Shumpert. That will be his first. Yeah, chance to look at it again. You see the high low out of the pictures, the low post, man. Ooh, that's tough. Anytime you don't move your feet in front of the guy driving, it's 50-50. You, you always run the risk of getting called for the foul. That was a tough one. Lamazana at the line. Of course, the well-documented story didn't play last year to get his academics in order after coming over from the Ivory Coast several years ago. He was a parade high school All-American and then had to sit out the first eight games this year due to an NCAA violation. But boy, do they love his athleticism and what he brings. Oh, since that guy can shoot it like that, even though he hasn't shown it yet today, Rector shows a little pressure there, just a little token pressure. Syracuse goes through it relatively easily. Now back into the zone. Shumper, wow. If that earlier one was from Binghamton, I think that was across the border down in Scranton. I was going to say, that was to explain why Jim Beheim said that guy may be the best shooter he's had. That was very deep, and they needed that one. Shumpert now into 
double figures with 10. Doing a good job not allowing the ball in the lane on the pass. That was pretty good defensive possession that time by the Cubs. Williams to Shumpert, unattended. Oh, you like that. More. You like that, Williams. Knows the hot hand is finally starting to emerge. Drives it to a little crease in the defense. Throws it out in the corner and it's a walk in the park for Mr. Shumpert. All-time leader, three-pointers at Syracuse. The numbers continue to grow for Preston. Jerome Coleman tries to respond. Big, big time to get it. Get it back in Shumpert's hands here. He's hot. He got all the momentum. Find him. Find him. Take the extra pass and find him here now. You can go up by as many as eight points here. Well, he hit two from the left. Now he comes and hangs out over on the right side. Oh, let the fans over here get a look at him. <laughs> Dwayne. Shepard orchestrated that whole play. It's going to force Kerry Waters to call a timeout. Shepard told Dwayne to go to the corner. Defense ran at him. Found the open man. you got to like an unselfish leading scorer. Rutgers was on a 1-0 run. And then Syracuse <laughs> rings the threes on him. Three in a row. Shepard with two and Dwayne with one. That was the deep one to start it. Then the nice kick from Williams. Look how deep he is again. Does a good job of stepping into the line, which so many shooters don't do. Get behind the line, step into it so you still have a three. And then watch, as the defender runs at him, he finds Dwayne in the corner. Coleman ran at him. He had that play in mind all along. And that's the experience of Preston Shepard. How about that? Just like that, a one-point deficit, an eight-point lead, nine unanswered points. And that's the first time in the 15 minutes and two seconds we've played. Anybody's really done anything. And get some momentum, Beth. Syracuse the first to grab it. Look at them bouncing now defensively, a little more active. They <laughs> sense it. A experienced team. Three threes will get you juiced up on the defensive end. A little more spring in there, Steph. And another touch. Theus got a hand on it. Big test here in the first half for a young Rutgers club. Taken away, Theus. That is the experience on the floor right now, but they know that they have this team that's hoping they can win, doubting themselves a bit. They are active. How many deflections, how many touches, and now a run out bump. Eight for their last 15, following a one for 12 start from the floor. And the defense generating points down the other end. And there's the tip. That was the tail end of it. They'd already deflected it two or three times before that. And then Theus with a nice job of looking ahead. Shepard, of course, is on a nice little roll right now. Suddenly 15 points for him, just like that. Another touch, another deflection. 12th turnover of the half for Rutgers. This time it's Williams with the finish. Now this is not a run. This is a frenzy. And they'll get another timeout. And now Jim Behart's got no complaints. This is a lot of people standing, and none of their neighbors are telling him to sit down. Great run by Syracuse, started with the three-point shooting and has spilled over to the defensive end where they have been just getting deflections here in the inbounds pass. This is a team that plays so much zone, used to having their hands up. You can't just throw the ball over them. you got to make a ball fake, move the defense, move their hands down, up, throw it around them. That has led to a lot of turnovers by Rutgers tonight, just throwing the ball right into the defender's hands. And fortunately for Syracuse, unlike early in the game, when they've created turnovers, they've converted them into to points. They hadn't done that early. They have on the last few possessions and got the lead to 12. Eight points on the break now. I guess it's gone from a run to a mini marathon. A 13-1 <laughs> run for Jim Beheim's club. Don't forget to log on to the Big East Conference website, www.bigeast.org for all the latest news from around the conference. See if Rutgers has an answer. Early, they went high-low. They tried to dribble the ball at the seam. Let's see if they can find Coleman or if they can get some you know, post involvement, get Kent involved. Right now, they're just standing on the perimeter. Theus really a big part of the spark defensively. Five steals and then five assists for James. Working inside to Kent. Well, the downside, and you pointed this out right at the top, Beth. Here's the problem. You go to a timeout, you do a, do, do a good job of going high-low. Sean Iksani came in, got it at the high post. They were looking to do that. When he did, Kent seals his man. They go high-low and throw it to the low post. But now Kent, it's a, it's a crapshoot on the free-throw line. You know, you miss these, makes this position a turnover, really, if, if effectively, even though you executed your offense perfectly. 
He doesn't make either of these. It's an empty possession. You, talk, you talked about the importance in close games, and Rutgers as a team, Bob, has nine trips to the line that they don't get anything out of every game. Nine, nine misses. Well, this guy's one of the reasons why. It's painful for him. He just, he doesn't even miss the same way, but there is one way to make up for get the rebound. Coleman, wow! Well, that was huge because that, as I said, would have been an empty possession. They turned the missed free throw into turned the negative into a positive. Got a three-pointer out of it. His nine points all on threes to end the Syracuse run. Williams can't counter. They tried to give up a three again, Beth, but not quite. <laughs> and Rutgers trying to get a little run going of their own. We'll see. This would be important the last three minutes of the half. Get this thing down a bit. Can't bounce it there. Shumpert. Syracuse has numbers. Preston waits for Axani to blow by. And then hits 17 first half points for Preston Shumpert. Doesn't he make it look easy sometimes? Waited for all the flotsam and jetsam to go by and said, I think I'll shoot it now that I have room. I'll be careful in there. That's just what you don't want to do. 14 turnovers now, Bob. Leading to 10 Syracuse points. Good here we talked about early. They weren't during the Syracuse. Watch how calmly he looks, lets the defense go by him. Sees there's no one to pass it to. Knocks it down. Shepard and Syracuse on a roll in the dome. Big East regular season debut for our first year Rutgers head coach Gary Waters after coming over from Kent where he had 92 wins in five years, a couple of trips to the NCAA tournament. And in the NIT in 2000, he had wins over Rutgers and Villanova. So no stranger certainly of the Big East coaches. Well, as a bit of his resume, very impressive. And, and maybe something that's not up there that may be as impressive as anything in his last three years at Kent, 70 and 25. That's so strong no matter where you're coaching. And he's kind of a throwback. He preaches the old school stuff. He really wants the, the players to be involved in his life and he and theirs. He lives five minutes from campus. He, he, he you know, talks the talk, but he walks the walk as well. And it's been a it's been greeted very warmly at Rutgers. Dwayne misses on the three. Well, it's been a learning experience for him, too. They lost their first two games of the season. He said, you know, I haven't lost two in a row in three years. <laughs> They've made some of the right adjustments. This nice look to Williams. Well, that is what Syracuse does so well, is when you do make a mistake, the guards at the top of the zone are out there flying, and you'll pay for it. Rutgers is really making, you talk about shot selection all the time, they're really doing a bad job in pass selection. They're just throwing the wrong pass. There's, there's no way to get the pass they're attempting to throw there. There's no room on that one, and it's led to an easy run out of it. Syracuse's big three now with 34 of 35 points for the Orangemen. Shumpert with another rebound. Theus now with six assists in the first half. Williams, the look to Dwayne. Theus will try the three, and he hits it. Wow. They're on a nice, confident roll right now. That is their sixth three-pointer of the half, and they have done it in a bunch here. In uh, the last, what has it been, Beth? Maybe six minutes while yep. these have come in a cluster. It's a five-point game with five and a half to play. And the Rutgers now again, that very soft on the perimeter, nothing going on. Where's the high post man? Where's the seam? There's the seam. did, but I'm not sure it was by fourth. I couldn't tell where he, because he kind of recoiled into fourth. Let's see if we can see it again. Because uh, fourth does not look too pleased about it. There is... See, turns back into fourth. Look like he was turning away from somebody who kind of poked him while the ball was loose on the floor. Fourth says, all right, I'm a freshman. I'll put up with it now, but not too much longer. Rutgers in danger here of building an insurmountable hole for, uh, for themselves on the road. Tough place to overcome 15, 16 point deficits. They need to make a little mini run before the half here. See if they can even get it down to 12 or 11. Get it down to 14 right now. And there's still a couple possessions left. Coleman has been the bright spot offensively with 11 points now for Rutgers. The junior from Maryland, where he played uh, Juco, he 
is originally from New York City. He was a high school teammate of Mike Sherrod's at Robeson High School. Sherrod uh, worked with the coaching staff to get Coleman to Rutgers. Dwayne. Contested three. Well, what great composure by Williams. Got his shot blocked. Rather than get overly determined to get the shot back up the second time, caught it, took a look around, said, hey, that guy's wide open. And Dwayne, he turns it into three. Biggest lead of the night for Syracuse. Shields rebounds his own miss. Shumpert pushed on the rebound. Eugene Dabney, his first. Yeah, that was one of those right between the numbers jobs. No trouble calling that one. That'll be a double bonus for Syracuse now. Dwayne talks over to Williams right in front of us, says, nice pass. Williams nods his head, says, I know. And he's right, it was a nice pass. Syracuse has now scored 23 of the last 29 points in the game. Shumpert, after a slow start, a couple of free throws away from matching his season high for points scored in a half. He had 19 against Albany, 19 against Binghamton, 18 here tonight. Well, I, I, I've said this many times. I think Jim Beheim's teams are underappreciated for the things they do defensively because they play so much in that 2-3 zone. But make no mistake, they go as their offense takes them. And these three guys right now have got it going. Quet Dwayne, three for four from behind the line right now. He's got it going. Last chance of the half, Rutgers. Shields will try for three. Can't knock it down. Tough, tough task for a Rutgers team. Gary Waters has to be bitterly disappointed. This is just what you don't want on the road to go in the locker room and have to come up with that 19-point down speech. And right now, Syracuse offensively has seized this one by the throat. Well, the old golf nail I don't know if he's got that club in his bag at this point. <laughs> down 43-24. Shumpert leading the way for Syracuse with 19 points. Hi, I'm Phil Mickelson. Everybody can use a good tip. Thanks, Phil. And I give my best tips only in Golf Digest. Golf Digest is the golf magazine. Information on equipment, the best places to play, easy to follow tips, and instruction from the best teachers and players in the game. Call 800-543-6200 and get your first issue risk-free. That's 12 issues for only 1977, including this handy... We're seeing Gary Waters in his first year at Rutgers. They will meet Georgetown on Saturday. Well, you talk about defense. That's how he's built his program, defense and rebounding. And nobody's defended and beat you up better than Georgetown over the years. So that should be a good ball game as well. Syracuse, but often they were unforced turnovers and that upped the shooting percentage and everything snowballed from there. Twice as many turnovers, in fact, as field goals in the first half for Rutgers. Not so for Preston Shumpert. Well, nice job getting it into the post, back out, and then Shumpert stretches the defense with that deep, deep three, but it all started by throwing it into the post. Now, here's a good steal. Nice play by Theus, gets his hand in there, and then, more importantly, just getting the steal, knows what to do with it. Dwayne with the good run out, leads to the uncontested dunk at the other end and again this is what they started to do after the turnovers again active hands two guys hands in the passing lane there and as soon as they get it they're always looking up those two front guys on the zone are both looking to take off that time it's Williams you get easy looks that way your shooting percentage skyrockets and a lead 19 just what you see at the head the big three for Syracuse with a big first half ball orange in the first 20 minutes Lamazana, Shields, and Kent, who all average in double figures, have not helped him out thus far. Kent's hardly touched the ball. Lamazana has struggled shooting it. Rutgers has to show a little fortitude to get back in this thing. Kent had a chance there, couldn't knock it down. Well, they threw it to the guy they wanted to inside. I don't think anybody thinks Rutgers is going to overcome a 19-point deficit on the road here in the Dome, but they've got to get a little bit of their pride back, getting ready for Georgetown this weekend. Shield, Sherrod, Dabney, Coleman, and Kent. Same starting five to start the second half in red for Rutgers. Deshaun Williams on the drive. Sherrod comes out with it. 
Looking for Shields. Stripped by Dwayne, and the foul is on Craig, who was out there with Ford, Shepard, Williams, and Warwick. Same starting five as well for the Orangemen. I don't mean to imply this game's over. Obviously, it's uh, it's not the case. Rutgers still has an entire half to try and turn things around. But my point is, win or lose, they've got to focus on playing better this half. So it's the first game of a Big East season. They can't make that first half the, uh, the yardstick for them. That's got to be looked at as an aberration and get back on track. Again, the Achilles heel of this team. That's gonna. No, do they, is Roll Aids a sponsor for them? Because it should be. Because the free throw shooting is just going to kick Rutgers in the teeth all year. They finally get one to go down. Yeah, Shields it's, there. It's not good when one of your best free throw shooters only gets one or two. Ricky Shields. Rutgers again shows a little pressure, looking to find a spot to trap. But a good job by the veteran Shepard throws right over the top of it. Williams. Misses on the three. Syracuse matched their average in a game for three-pointers in the first half with seven of them. And they made a cluster on There's no question about that. They got a good look right there against the press, too. The lob inside. Dabney can't put it away. Can't throw it in there unless you can do something with it. Keep talking about having to throw it in. Throw it in, throw it back out, get a three. You got to get something when you throw it three feet away from the basket. Two trips into the paint on their first two possessions. They come up empty. Shumper hangs and hits. Oh, contrast it with that, Beth. Throw it to that guy two feet from the goal. He gets the maximum amount of points. Gets the basket, chance to go to the line. Very, very smart. Remember Bill Bradley who was he's the subject, I guess, he didn't write a book, A Sense of Where You Are. And that's what that is right there. Catching the ball and knowing where you are. Uh, so as the ball's on its way to you, so you can turn and make that quick move to the goal. Just the free throw, though. 21 for Shumper. Quick whistle on the held ball. Shields at fourth. Syracuse will keep it. Substitution as Shields goes out. Wright comes back on, limited in the first half after picking up a couple of quick fouls. Is that play they run for Shepard on the inbounds? It's time they go to the second option, look in the lane. Warwick. Nice job. Shepard had count, come free on that play earlier in the first half. Defense reacts to that, so they go to the next option, which is Warwick, and he knows what to do with it. And Syracuse really on all cylinders offensively now. First basket for the freshman from Philly. Hugh Williams step out in the passing lane there. Gerard. Got poked in the eye, it looks like. The other way, Dwayne. Well, he went down like the, the shot. And he clearly upset at holding his left eye, I guess. Let's see if we can get another look at it and see who got him. All right, let's take a look. Driving the lane. Some people reach for the ball and. I think it was Williams with I, a scrape. Was something, like. K. Is he wear contacts? I wonder too, because as we watch, if you watch it again, something comes flying out of there, and I don't think it's a bead of sweat. He is. Yeah, they, see, it's laying right by the free throw line. The official kept coming down to look at it to see if it is a. It's right by the free throw line. You can see it. I don't know if anybody can see that again, guys. You'll you can see it. He just went and wiped it up, whatever it was. I don't know if he, the official went and just picked it up. I don't know what it was, but he gets, well, he's already cringing right there. So it was on the drive from the top. See that right, right above Dwayne's head? Yeah. Dropping right down there. I don't know what that is. The official just picked it up, but he is Dylan Payne. Just a piece of gum is all that is? If it is, it was the most painful piece of gum he's ever gotten rid of because he is still holding his eye. I'm not happy about it, but that is unfortunately a call officials do miss from time to time. Is, I don't think there's any doubt he got hit there. He yeah. deserves an Academy Award for acting. That's the third time that a Rutgers player has gone into the paint and either got a scratch there or no, see, on isn't. one other occasion ran into fourth. Uh, there's still something down on the floor it's there. It's a contact. There's got to be a contact in, involved or, well, now they're not. Now they're saying no. I don't know. This has been 
a mystery. The gum is what threw everybody off, I think. I believe it was gum, and uh, I think it had everybody baffled. But we're back to business here, and Rutgers has got to get back on track. Sherrod replaced by Joel Wigan. Number 13 with the basketball. Jason McCoy, 21, has also come on. Holman tied up by Williams. Such a good job, the guys out front. Just, you know, you, you hear about that 2 3 zone. I think people visualize like back in their old CYO league standing around playing 2 3. <laughs> These guys get hands in the lane. They're actively trying to dribble and split them. They're always tying you up. Oh, that perfect example right there. So they went right between the zone. Good rotation and turns into the steel. Warwick does a good job rotating back. Waters envisions John Chaney. He said today at shoot around it's getting to the point where it's just as good as Temple's has been over the years. That 2 3 zone. Certainly not as heralded, it's, but it should be appreciated for what it is. He's getting a lot of mileage out of this. The three from Coleman, that's his fourth of the game for Jerome. Uh, we know this, the jury has uh, reached a verdict on that. This guy is going to be a shooter for them all year long. But just got to try and put a little run together, as I said, try and build on that. Syracuse offensively really been effective from about the 15-minute uh, mark in the first half. Well, after they lost Todd Billett, who transferred down to Virginia, Gary Waters' first priority was to find a shooter. He went out and got Coleman, who had also been considering St. John's. Contact on the drive from Warwick. Different kinds of players. The one thing Coleman usually will have to do is take more shots to get the same amount of points as Billet. He's more of a, even though he's a very good shooter, he will take more shots. Bill did not tend to force the issue. And in this case, Coleman has to force the issue because if he doesn't, they're not going to have very much of a perimeter game. Third personal foul on Kareem Wright. And I think uh, Bob, the stat that really jumped off the page at Waters was without Billet, they had returning this year had made a grand total of three three-point <laughs> shots last season. <laughs> oh, Coach, here's your office. And by the way, you got three three-point shots in your cupboard. That's it. And two of them were from the walk-on, Connor Fox. <laughs> exactly. Oh, and window again. We've seen a lot of interesting window <laughs> shots tonight. From the three, from the line. A couple weeks ago when it was still mild here in Syracuse, the window would have been open. They wouldn't have been able to use it. It's been closed today with the cold weather. Look at the hands. Good hands. Not extending out on the non-shooters, and Rutgers has a few of them. Wigan, that one pops up. <laughs> Trying to find a seat in that zone. And, turnover. and that has been the story of the game. 17 for Rutgers and uh, 18, excuse me, that's the 18th turnover. You can't do that and get out rebounded, have any kind of a chance. Their season high is 24 giveaways, and they've still got 16 minutes to go here. That's how you wind up down 22, Beth. They're, they're getting out rebounded 23 18, Rutgers is. They've made 18 turnovers, only. Uh, uh, and only created 10, and they're getting outshot 42% to 31. That's the trifecta of bad stats for your team. The wrong side of the trifecta. Shumpert probing. Good help from Wright. Ends up with fourth. Not the softest of touches on that shot, but Syracuse gets the rebound. I don't know how that ball got through there, really. Warwick trying to spin around Kent. Dwayne, oh, dishes it to Warwick. Yeah, a little bit of frustration and uh, hard to, never want to, you never want to rationalize that, but certainly can understand the frustration for Joel Wiggin. Three guys there, never want three guys on the ball, and if you have it, a weak side man, in that case, Wiggin, too slow to get to the lane watch. He's a step late getting there. The cutter's already there. Now he comes across. Too late. Creates possible three-point play for Warren. Five points now for Hakeem, who has started every game since the third game of the year. Boy, when it rains in fours wow. for you, misses a free throw, you get a lane violation. Oh, Gary. There'll be better nights, Coach. Better nights. Misses it again. Oh, 
Shields. Three balls good. That was a good looking three there. Shields is a guy who actually can shoot it a bit. We under, underestimated about 37%. That one, big high arc on that one. He's the first freshman to have back-to-back 20-point -back games since Phil Sellers back in 1972. Wow. Had that earlier in the season. Here's Ricky again. You know what, that's one of those plays you look at and, 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 and honestly, you, you expect the foul to be there. Dwayne, he's got a bad angle. Let's take a look. You see, he's got, he's got a tough angle. There's the long pass. Dwayne's come from a bad angle. Well, unless he got him with the body. Both those hands were right on top of the basketball. But good strong move by Shields, who actually lives in town I used to live, Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Prince George's County. In the suburb of D.C. Yes, they did have a home made, huh? <laughs> Well, Dwayne, he picks up his third personal, but he stays in the game. Williams goes out, replaced by Theus. Ricky with a 40-inch vertical. And I think Weth matched it on that last play. Shields now with nine. Rutgers trying to get back into it here in the second half. Versatility gets down on the baseline, posts up, sees where the defense is, leans in, scores the bucket, and draws the foul. On the other end, Mr. Coleman, Jerome Coleman is uh, showing his ability from the perimeter. He's been a little bit more one-dimensional, but it hasn't been his fault. His numbers have been very strong, just hasn't had the good supporting cast. But I'll show you how much of a presence he is as Coleman with 14, Shumpert 21. Coleman four for six behind the arc. Beth, he has taken coming into tonight's action tonight, Coleman, exactly half of all the three-pointers for the entire team at Rutgers. 97 out of 194. So right now he is there <laughs> clearly to say not only their primary <laughs> outside threat, their overwhelming outside threat. And that is the one thing Shepard adds to his game. He goes inside, drives, he's got a lot of versatility. Shepard not right always here. a good three-point shooter. He has worked on that aspect and the foul called out top is going to go on Wigan. You just His see that third. though there, Beth, as they press, who's the ball, who's the ball go to, Shepard? He's got six, six size to throw over it, takes the ball away from the defense, draws the foul. Turned into a versatile player in addition to, to as you say, developing a great three-point ability. 38% on his career. Only Matt Rowe has shot it better at Syracuse. Theus, the drive, the dish, and he's going to be called for the offensive foul. Shepard, they were, again, that was out of the timeout. They played for him. He posted up, got it, was triple teamed, made the nice pass out of the trap. Really did create a shot opportunity for his team, but a little over anxious. Drove, drove it into trouble and gets the turnover. One of the few mistakes that James has made today is season high six steals, six assists, and the slash to the bucket by Eugene Dabney, his first points. Well, you can't talk about how much Rutgers could have used this all night long. They, they've been playing all only on the perimeter or high low, they throw it to the baseline. And again, that sense of where you are, Dabney catches it as the ball's in the air. He knows the space is there, so he takes it, goes right to the floor with it, and winds up getting an easy bucket out of it, and now a chance to go to the line. Rutgers has gotten very, very little. Tribute to what Syracuse does when the ball goes down to the baseline. Rutgers has been able to get very little offense from that part of the floor. Dabney completes the three-point play. No relation to Mike Dabney, one of the stars on that 76 Final Four team. Dwayne for McNeil. Yeah, how perfect off the blackboard was that for press attack? One side to the middle, look opposite, keep your composure, rim rattling dunk. When you talk to Rutgers, uh, that 76 team is mentioned quite often in, in terms of where they want to get back to and the redevelopment of this Rutgers program for Gary Waters. Loose ball and while the ball scrambled for, Rutgers takes a timeout. Syracuse right off the blackboard, sideline, middle, opposite. Point lead, just like that.
the three pint breakup. So you finally dumped him. to play here at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. And Miami stays unbeaten, 79-71 on the road in D.C. tonight. Four, 13 not unlucky for the Canes. How about that? That is, uh, you know, as we talked about, Beth, this is the weekend you start getting some answers from how impressive those starts really were for some teams. Well, I guess we found out that start is legit. Yeah. It's a very, very important victory for them. Ties it for first place in the conference. <laughs> <laughs> Good defensive effort, too. Georgetown had been the leading scorer in the league non-conference at 85 points a game. They won to 71. Shields will head back to the free throw line. Well, again, it's twice now. We've seen Rutgers get the ball to the baseline and get some offense out of that position, and that's good because very difficult to attack a zone when you've just conceded basically 20% of the offensive area to the defense. You've got to make them guard you everywhere. And finally, Rutgers getting some stuff on the baseline. We talked at the start of the half, Bob, about finding some help for Jerome Coleman. Shields has said, okay, let me pick some of that up. He's got uh, 10 points now in the game, uh, most of those coming in the second half. But still, Kent and Lamazana, who give you 21 points a night, are one for four combined for just three points. And McNeil has a chance for three here for Syracuse. Well, this is what's frustrating when you're a new coach. Gary Waters likes to press. And, wants, and ultimately, this will be a pressing program. But right now, they just don't understand it well enough. They don't have enough experience. Again, that diagonal pass. And Syracuse has done a very good job when it goes to the middle, getting it opposite. And the big fella says, you know what? I'll take all those you want to give me. You throw it to the middle, throw it to me here, and I'll be more than happy to dunk it for you. That's right off of the blackboard for press attack. McNeil completes the three-point play. Five points now for Jeremy, the sophomore from San Antonio. Rutgers wants somebody in the high post, but nobody's coming there. And then they throw it out of bounds. You can see in the eyes of Wigan, he was looking for somebody to flash high. And we'll see if Rutgers will continue to try and press. We've got to do a better job of denying the ball in the middle of the floor. I you know they're just going to fall back and play man-to-man -man here. Let's see if they look for Shumper. There he goes, baseline. Preston falling away, and it looked like he was going to dish to McNeil, but the defense adjusted at the last minute, so he shot it. Boy, that mid-range game is becoming a lost art, and he knows how to, where to go without the basketball. And that can't just be a player with the ball to score. you got to play without it. He does a good job of that. Shields elevates for the three. Kent tries to call a timeout as he's going out of bounds, but he did not have possession. Official John Cahill, so it'll go over to Syracuse. Well, the downside for this, obviously, if you're Rutgers, is this is no time to rest in this league. You got Georgetown who'll be coming back licking its wounds in their next game. You got to use this last 12 minutes to get back on track a bit as best you can. And Syracuse not making it easy for them, although they'll help them here with an illegal screen. It'll turn into a turnover. McNeil called for the foul. Well, starting tonight, they've just got St. Peter's left on the non-conference schedule. Everybody else, Big East, and Jim Beheim, who probably watches more basketball on TV than just about anybody in the country, says, hey, undoubtedly, from top to bottom, the Big East is the best in the country this year. I'm well, sure there are a lot of other people that would argue that, but it's going to be a very competitive league, he I thinks. I think that what it is is there's, there's really no bad teams. Yeah. It, goes, it's, it goes pretty deep down there with good basketball teams. I'm not sure there are any great, great teams, although there's some pretty good ones. But all the way down, there are some very strong basketball teams. 12-24 to play here in the Carrier Dome at Syracuse, New York. The Orangemen... A 25-6 run at the end of the first half, and it has been all Syracuse since then, 59-37 the score right now. Beth Bones and Bob Velvano, and hanging and hitting is Jason McCoy. That time they did a good job spreading the defense out, making them chase him a little bit. Josh Pace now has come on for Syracuse, number five. Shumper in trouble. Theus on the drive. They don't really understand the 
the secondary rotations in this trap yet. So if Syracuse doesn't turn it over quickly, and they haven't, there are lanes everywhere for layups and dunks. And that's what we're seeing them get, layups and dunks. All sixes for Theus. Points, steals, assists. I've been impressed with his poise out there. Almost got the strip. Coleman, got it. Well, that is just beautiful look at shot. That was right smack in the middle of the rim there. Nice kick. Again, Rutgers got him to chase him a little bit. A couple of ball reversals, and that's what creates the easy shot. But unless they can get something done on the defensive end, they're not going to put any run together, and Syracuse is not allowing him to do that. Five threes now for Coleman as Theus walks with it. And trying to rally Rutgers against Syracuse here in the Dome. Syracuse the lead over Rutgers and now let's take a look at the BMW ultimate drive of the game. Well the guy who winds up getting it is McNeil but it's because they do a great job on the press attack. You get the ball in the middle of the floor as you saw them do there. They put it in the hands of Dwayne and Dwayne did what you should do in the press. You get the ball there against almost any press in America and it's beaten. He looked opposite, found McNeil and McNeil knew what to do with it. Finish it with the dunk. Knocked around, Shumpert comes out with it. Active hands, good job by fourth. Get a hand in the passing lane. Williams blocked as he went up. Pace tries it, stripped. Williams blocked again by Lamazana. Airway looking to get a handle. It's all white jerseys at the other end. That's the kind of nice fit for Rutgers. Poor Gary Waters. If he just can pick the ball up, they literally have a four on none break. They lose it, turns into a five. On none the other way for the dunk for the <laughs> freshman. Couldn't get a hold of the hot potato and they got mashed by fourth at the other end. Kent Rashad will go to the line. If you could watch this now as that scramble takes place, watch. The ball is blocked once. Ball's on the floor, knocked loose, blocked again, and now Rutgers takes off. They got a little momentum. If he could just throw it, his whole team is ahead of him, but no. <laughs> and these are all white jerseys at this end, and a dunk for fourth. <laughs> Rashad Kent to the line. Gets one to go after missing on his first four free throw attempts. Three points now for Rashad, who has the best shooting percentage from the floor in Rutgers history. And he should probably finish up his career in the top five all time in rebounds as well as steals, which gives you a good idea of his versatility. But the foul shooting probably will not be remembered for. That's I mean, when you make one and then airball the very next one, it gives you an idea. It's just got some very, very serious problems. He gets another try for the lane violation, and this is that as well. One for six from the strike. They're going to press even though they missed. And it's going to get a turnover for them. That's one of the few times Syracuse has not really made the simple pass against the press. They've just made a series of simple passes and picked it apart. That time they kind of went for a big chunk and got a turnover. Still over 10 minutes to go for the Scarlet Knights. Lamazana <laughs> triple teamed at the elbow and the foul will be called on fourth. So those are the things I don't think people appreciate that Syracuse does such a good job in this zone. They see sometimes not a lot of ball pressure standing back. I think they're not really working hard. When you put the ball in certain positions, they attack you. The baseline we saw the trap, the high post. If you get it there, you're surrounded by bees, hands, people deflecting, people obstructing your vision. That time a little overzealous led to the foul. But that's why they create the turnovers, even sometimes without the great ball pressure. Lamazana, 63% from the line. All his points, well, both of his points, I should say, have come at the line. As Rector's now 10 for 18. They need offense out of him. One of the reasons they are struggling today. He's only got those three points. He's been an important guy off the bench. Here we go again. The press, diagonal to the middle, and... Great play, great hustle.
Russell because again Syracuse put on a clinic and press attack. The inbounds pass. They threw it on the diagonal. Then Dwayne, who's been a guy who's made a lot of those assists, puts it in the big freshman's hands. But Kent does not quit. Keeps retreating and gets in there and makes. I don't know why the fans are. I know why they're complaining because they wanted a free throw, but they are. I would respectfully submit incorrect in this yes. case. Beth. being in the double bonus the rest of the night, but they haven't been able to knock down as many freebies as they would like. Dwayne misses on the three. Nice pass from Shumper to get him that look though, again against the press. Really trying to find Kent, taken away by Dwayne. Yeah, but good play by Fourth, the big fellow, the seven footer running back, gets a hand in the passing lane. He's got very active hands for a big fellow. They like his intangibles, how he gets up and down the floor. He's a good passer for a big guy. There he, there's one of those passes. Good look opposite. Pace switches hands in midair. Schumper tried to tip it up. Four. This is the glass. That was for you, Ben. He showed you the whole versatility on that one play. Made a great pass. Hustled down the lane. Tapped it, missed it, got it back, and scored it. The whole package. Very impressive out of the seven-footer. There's the freshman. Shumpert. He'll take that one. <laughs> you know what? You have no idea how hard to do that that is. <laughs> to dribble the ball to a spot. Three feet away, stop, let the defense pass, and just shoot it. That is a skill few guys have. Shumpert, I believe, is now eight for his last 11 shots, Bob. He reminds me of those crazy skaters, you know, in the ice campaigns that look all goofy. You don't realize how easy, how hard it is to do what they're making look so easy. He just caught it, took it to that spot, and let all of the circus of the world pass him by and made the jump shot. Not an easy thing to do. And then a pretty good celebration there, too, as well. But he deserved it. He has been on fire of late. And you know what, Beth? You pointed it out a couple times already. When he got going, no question, that's when Syracuse got going. Triggered everything. Triggered the defense. Triggered all the activity on the zone. He has uh, very much this team on his back, even though he's getting great support. Seeing it tonight, Williams has 13, which is not near his average yet, but still 22 points out of Williams and Dwayne. He is fine. Rutgers only has 45, so Williams and Dwayne alone have almost half Rutgers total. But Shepard is the guy that can kickstart this team to whatever levels they will achieve. The Big East most improved player last year, putting up MVP numbers this year. In the lane, Jerome Coleman, 19 now for Jerome. His career high 24 against Princeton. That's he's hit 24 twice this year. Look at Shumper. That's just real good court vision. Pace Back to Shumper. Something good will happen. There's Preston. Oh, you get a layup out of it. Oh, big guy kicked that strong. That's what you want. The first one was an excuse me tap, Beth. Second one, he meant business. Learning about life in the Big East Conference is Craig Forth. Shepard gets in the last and something good will happen. He gets in, draws the defense. What is, what is that? What, what, one hand, he didn't put his left hand on it. Can't do that at this level. You're not East Greenbush, New York anymore. May have worked at Columbia High School, but Absolutely. not here, right? Eugene Dabney comes on. Lamazana will sit down. for Jerome. Shumpert. Just a little subtle fake. He looked away to, uh, to his left, to Theus. Defense bought it, and he said, I have room. But he's going to make another one. Coleman again. Boy, he wanted the ball badly there. It was bust a vein. Call 
going for the ball that time. He is feeling it, as they say, and so is Jim Beheim. What he's feeling is not as pleasant as what Coleman's feeling right now. Yelling at his team. Guys, the guys made how many threes tonight is it? Seven, Seven threes. You might want to get out and guard him out there. A new career high, 25 points for Jerome Coleman. Well, to state the obvious, the danger is he makes that many threes. It's only a 15-point game. Now as the coach starts saying, hey, wait a minute. This guy could shoot them back in it. This was the first one. That was pretty deep. But now the second one he is absolutely right now. You, you could, from where we were sitting, you'd see the vein in his neck. He was ready to shoot that before the ball even started to him. That was he was. He's in the zone, to use the cliche, and he knows it. And uh, this is a guy that will have to do this all year for Rutgers, a career high in his brief Rutgers career. And his career high night started, if we remember back, Bob, his first shot didn't even touch iron. No, he was way off. Good follow again, no problem with the press. Pace gets the follow. First basket for the freshman from Griffin, Georgia. Again, Coleman's trying to get his feet set already. Throw it back to me. Here I am. Here I am. I'm right here. Give it to me. Oh, nice idea. Drew the defense and had a passing lane. Tried to feed it to Dabney. Instead, it's Pace at the other end. Syracuse does a great job of that when you make a mistake. They fill the lanes and turn into easy buckets. Pace has got a couple of easy ones in the last two possessions. Inside Dabney, and he's fouled by four. The fourth on four. Mm, that was tough. We'll see that again as well. And kind of, uh, I do like Dabney, who, is, who can almost match fourth in height. He is 6'10". I like the fact he'll attack along the baseline, but that time, looked like it was pretty good defense. Syracuse active hands. Gets one or two. We wanted to update you as well on Mike Sherrod, who went out earlier in the half. Poked in the left eye. He's been experiencing some blurred vision. And a cut in his eyelid was bleeding. It is doubtful that Sherrod will return, according to the Rutgers bench. Jerome Coleman, though, trying to shoot Rutgers back into it. 72-55, under six and a half to go. Well, we saw some fast break points there, uh, Bob, and uh, that's been one of the storylines here for Syracuse tonight. Yeah, they have gotten a lot of the fast break points whenever Rutgers has made a mistake, and then when Rutgers has scored and put that press on, Syracuse has put a clinic on how to break it. Look at this. Fast break point, 16 zip. Basically the story of the game. Syracuse with a 17-point lead. And again, against the press, Syracuse done a pretty good job. Shumpert's got a lot of experience against it. Gary Water said today at shoot around, we've got to get some of those fast break points. Got to get some easy buckets before the 2 3 zone gets set. And obviously, they haven't been able to do that. A shot clock uh, problem right now. Shot clock shows 34. I, I don't. I seem to be a bit more than a second all of those passes and dribbles. So I, I guess that's what uh, caught. John Cahill's attention. You know, the one thing about Shumper that makes him so tough in the press, we've talked about a number of times today, is he is 6'6", and he's got such experience. He rarely takes the ball into places where there's trouble. If you're Rutgers, though, one of the things you got to look at right now is their press has had so little pressure on the ball. The guy with the ball, usually Shumper, has had whatever pass he's wanted. Now you make the back guy's job almost impossible because yeah. you know, once he throws it out of that double team in the front court, you're playing four on three, four on two in the back. you got to get good ball pressure at some point. You're going to play your full court pressure. And I'm not sure what the discussion is right now because clearly the, the, the clock's got to be changed. You're going to leave it at one second? That seems a bit odd. Like I would you would think that after officials kind of make a guess. Off there, yeah. yeah, you know, seven seconds, eight seconds. Take your pick. Well, now they're working on it because they moved the game clock down a few seconds. The shot clock still says the same. Go. Now they're going to adjust it now to 29 seconds on the shot clock and counting down. Here's Shumpert, game high 26 points for Preston. 
22 on the other side for Jerome Coleman. Now down to five on the shot clock. Williams gets it to go. Even if you take him deep in the shot clock, they have an answer for you. Williams, strong kid. 6'3", 202 pounds, just kind of muscled his way in. They got the little leaner, and that's just what you need in that situation. Somebody's got to make a play. First basket of the second half for Deshaun. 11 points on the game. Can't throw the ball over the zone. I would, if it was a lab experiment, we've got enough data to know you can't do that, guys. So try and find another way to get it around. Mitch Garrett, number 10, has now come on for Rutgers, guarding Williams. Oh, nice dish, fourth. Has it blocked. Dabney got it. He's winded, the big, the big fella. He's going to, down the road, he'll make that play. Theus, another takeaway. Oh, nice finish on the baseline. Beautiful play by Pace. That's an awkward little shot against a team that blocks a lot of shots, and he got it to go down. Six now for Josh, under five to go. Syracuse opening up a close game in the last seven and a half minutes of the first half. It was tied, and then it was a 20-point orange lead. They have not uh, given too much of it back here in the second half. Dabney with the jam. Well, that's, you know, that, this team has some nice chemistry. Kent made the nice pass out, and then Coleman made a good pass. There's Ford with the finish. That's good for the young man. Get his confidence in his first Big East game. He's got, uh, you've seen a lot of upside with him today. Beck, you pointed out his versatility. You can see a lot of those things. Why the Syracuse staff likes him. Oh, wouldn't they love to have somebody like Ronnie Cycler that they had back in the heyday? Another jam. Dabney back to back easy buckets. Well, that's, uh, you know, Coach Bayhow, I'm sure never. Would like to see not good defense, but as long as they trade buckets, they're fine right now with this big lead. Shields, the kick out, Coleman. Misses on the three. He is one shy, by the way, of tying the Carrier Dome record, which Preston Shumpert holds with eight three-pointers. Jerome's got seven today. But Jim Beheim and the Orange in control here in their Big East opener. For Rutgers, 3.31 to go here in the Carrier Dome. Miami goes to 14 and 0. One of five unbeatens left. They beat Georgetown on the road tonight, 79-71. Anytime you win a conference road game, that's big. But to do it against Georgetown, how about Pittsburgh? Just having their way with St. John's, proving that their early start is no fluke. It's been then, six years since they beat the Johnnies. Look at this, a little bit surprising. They're not so one-sided. Villanova, Jay Wright. Of the three first-year head coaches, Lewis Orr won his Big East regular, or lost, excuse me, his regular season Big East opener against BC. Waters in trouble of losing his first, but Jay Wright may be the winner down in Villanova. Well, every time you get an ex-Hofster uh, ex guy, you know, all the good people are Hofster. <laughs> <laughs> That's to the, his advantage. One of my old places in play. Oh, what a nice pass. Nice bit of trickery off of a broken play, really, because the ball was just loose on the floor, and Theus knew behind him. Craig Forth was there. And watch the ball gets batted around. Again, trying to get it in the middle against some pressure, but a little bit behind him. Now it's loose on the floor, and whoop, here you go, big guy. Big fella in time, I think, will make that shot and have a chance at a three-point play here. He's worked very hard. You got to like his work ethic, and he's got a lot of skills. And Bob, how often do you get to pull out that Hofstra lineage line? Oh, no, absolutely. Like, <laughs> you gotta, you've got to go there as often as you can. <laughs> See, we work uh, Speedy Claxton into the broadcast a little bit later. Fourth down with seven points for Syracuse. Theus, nine steals for the Orange. Shields hits another big three. Boy, he, he's... Taylor, the old ABA player, way before your time, Beth, used to shoot threes like that. They came and had snow on the top of them. That was what that one looked like. He made his mixes more than Ollie did, though. 
Ooh, good block. Fourth. Well, Rutgers tonight, 11 baskets outside the arc, only seven inside the arc. Well, that's what the zone will do to you. You know, that's uh, what, when this zone is as active as Syracuse's is when you attack it. And uh, Rutgers, as we talked about, Beth, not able to get much going on the baseline, not much, couldn't put the ball in tense hands. Tough to win that way, just yeah. exclusively behind the arc. Waters wanted to win the rebounding game. Syracuse has a slight edge thus far. And of course, the, the turnovers, 27 of them today, not helping the Scarlet Knights cause. Well, that's where you get, you, you make two good points, because that's where you get the shots inside the arc. Stickbacks and off of turnovers. They haven't created turnovers. They don't get any stickbacks. One dimensional, all outside the arc. Shields riding pace down the floor. Well done, number two, Ricky Shields. This is a sophisticated offensive team, Syracuse. I don't think there's any question about that. You got three good guns there. We've talked about that. Two guys scoring 20 points a game, and then uh, Queth Dwayne, who can step up and score as well. They've got some size. If you press them, as we've seen tonight, they seem perfectly comfortable to go around it. It'll give them more threes. When you make a turnover, they make you pay for it. Interesting team offensively. You have to find a way to shut them down. Two for two. And really, Bob, not the same Rutgers team that a lot of folks around the country saw against Virginia when they almost won down in Charlottesville and gave us a glimpse of what they're calling the new direction is one of the mottos this year for Gary Waters in the program in his first season. A lot of talk about family and about work ethic. All three Rutgers coaches, their hands on their chins, a little bit of discouragement because I think they came in here expecting to put up a better fight. And I got another little disappointed with uh, certainly the way the game has gone for about 15 minutes in. There's a frustration foul. You don't want to see that. Got a long season to go. It's one bad night in the office. Going to go on Lamazana for the push on fourth. Well, it was really a frustration foul. As I said, you know, this is a guy who's probably as frustrated as anybody. Lamazan has been one of the guys everybody's singing the praises of why this team is different. Gives them offense off the bench. He's only got three points tonight, all from the line. Does not yet have a field goal, only four rebounds. And uh, they're going to need more out of him in this Big East season. No question about that. Yeah, Lamazana and Kent took just five shots between the two of them today. Well, let's take a look at our best play of the game, brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Well, in a game that's uh, almost 20 points, one play doesn't really turn it, but that one really kick-started this whole team, got the arena going. Preston Shepard announced with that shot he was going to have a big night. He's got 26 points, and that really was the one, I think, in both our minds, Beth, that got this place a little bit fired up. And a new career high tonight for Craig Forrest, now into double digits for the first time in the Syracuse uniform. He's got 10. You know, one of the things, he's got a nice touch from the line. And you got a big guy who shoots free throws like that. That's a big, big bonus. He's uh, coming into the game a 72% free throw shooter, and he's shown some, some nice touch uh, from the line tonight. Fellows four for six and looks very comfortable. Well, Bob, it wasn't too many years ago that that was one of the first things that came to people's mind when they thought about Syracuse. They weren't shooting the free throws well. Well, they've changed that in the last few years, and now 70% as a team this season. Another foul on top, Wigan. That's his fourth. Next up for Syracuse, they travel to Providence, and then next week, Lewis Orr returns home as Seton Hall comes to town on January the 8th. It'll be a special night, I'm certain. Yeah, the Louie and Bowie show will be reunited. Roosevelt Bowie is now a radio broadcaster here for Syracuse. And the numbers for Theus, that's a nice stat line. That'd be, that'd be one of the rare triple doubles if you can get one more steal. And uh, that's the hardest one to get, obviously. Yeah. Ten steals. You don't see that a lot. Of course, I know he needs some numbers in the other area as well. <laughs> but the point is, ten steals is very, very rare indeed. That would tie the, the dome record by Todd Bergen. He gets a big hand from the crowd. Appreciates the job. He's essentially become their sixth starter with the minutes that he That's gets. And Sh uh, Shumpert with 26. It only took 18 shots to do. We talked about that. He gets a lot of mileage out of his shots. Andrew Cowie now 
now into the game. One of the walk-ons for Syracuse. As is Ronell Herring. The lob for Lamazana, his only basket of the night. I'm sure that's not what he envisioned coming in here to the Dome for the first time. Scoring his only bucket to make it a 20-point game with less than 30 seconds to go. But uh, does it matter whether you're 6'10 and All-American in high school or freshman or senior? It's just, it's just, whatever the status is, the first time he's played in this building, as anybody who's done it will tell you, it is uh, an experience that is unlike many others. I think that's safe to say. So he will hopefully learn something from it. Gary Waters able to get 25 points from Jerome Coleman tonight, a new career high for Jerome. Ricky Shields also in double figures with 15. And too much from the Orangemen as they start out the Big East season 1-0. Impressive offensive performance. They got 87 points, and and that was after starting around about two of 12 from the floor. They only made two yeah. of their first 12 shots. So from that point on, the floodgates have been opened. And Jim Beheim, nice to see him back on the bench, and I'm sure he's pleased with the result as well. He should do. Gonna get the walk on the shot here. But he won't shoot it. Oh, he passed it. Oh, the crowd doesn't like that. Seven sixty-six. the final over Rutgers. Preston Shumpert leading the way with 26 points. And an impressive night for the senior from Fort Walton Beach. For Bob Valvano, I'm Beth Mowens. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports television.